Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 13th November, Sunday. The news items which we have picked up from the Hindu for today are these eight. We'll discuss them in detail. The first one, 43 dead in suicide blast at Sufi shrine in Balochistan. So this is regarding Balochistan, the region of unrest in Pakistan. You can see here this part is Balochistan. It has been also spoken of by Prime Minister Narendra Modi pointing out about unrest in Pakistan and rebel within itself. Also, we are discussing about giving asylum to Balochi rebels in India. So here a Sufi shrine was the place where this blast took place. The IS, Islamic State, has claimed responsibility for this blast. And in this, around 43 people, including women and children, died. More than 100 have been injured. Then the next news item is, Pune researchers fabricate a flexible nanogenerator for wearable electronics. So wearable electronics means an electronic device which can be worn by a person on his body. So such a device requires particular characteristics like it should be shock resistant, it should be flexible, lightweight, inexpensive. So that is what this criteria is met by a nano generator which these Pune researchers have developed. So they have developed it using piezoelectric material. So what is piezoelectric material and what is this piezoelectric effect we'll discuss. So this piezoelectric material was electro spun on a carbon cloth. So that is how they have generated it. Even it was coated, the fibers were coated with a stronger inorganic ferroelectric material. So that is how this nano generator has been developed and it produces 14 volts when thumb pressure is applied for around 20 minutes. So that is how it, it can be then be used to even charge a mobile phone. So such devices are futuristic devices. A step in this direction has been taken now by these Pune research. Now what is piezoelectric effect? So piezoelectric effect is observed in certain materials which have crystal lectis. So crystals generally have a charge balance. That is the positive and negative charges nullify each other along the rigid planes of the crystals. So when a pressure is applied on this plane, then the crystal balance, this charge balance in the crystal is disrupted and then they align themselves in such a way that an energy density is produced along the surface of the crystal. So this is the effect which generates electricity which can be used for useful purposes. That is what we see in this case also in the nano generator. So these piezoelectric materials are of various types like there are natural piezoelectric materials too, there are synthetic piezoelectric materials too. The most common and well known example is of quartz crystals. So there are others too, you can see Rochelle salt, topaz, crows, silk, enamel, dentin, DNA are natural piezoelectric materials. These are synthetic piezoelectric materials too. Then the next news item is new light on dark matter. Now, dark matter comprises of 85% of all the matter in the universe. But what is this dark matter? Dark matter is unknown matter. So, it is very weakly interactive with the matter in the universe. That is why it is not easily detected. It has not been detected so far. But then how do we know that dark matter exists? So, dark matter exists is postulated, is assumed because the galaxies in the universe are rapidly rotating without falling apart. So what is this which holds these galaxies together? Because only the gravitational pull, gravity is not sufficient for this. So there is something else too which binds these galaxies together. So that is known as dark matter. So that is how we know about dark matter. Now again, there are postulates on what this dark matter comprises of. So dark matter is said to be comprising of very heavy to very light particles. So one of the lightest particles postulated is an axion. So this axion, what is this axion and what is the mass of this axion? So a new light has been thrown on this aspect by researchers from Germany using a supercomputer, the Blue Gene Q supercomputer. So this, through this they have calculated that the mass of an axion is between 50 and 1500 microelectron volts. That is some 10 billion times lighter than an electron too. So this is the new calculation which has come forth. So that is why it is in news. But what is this axion to? How has this also been postulated? It is said this is proposed by extending quantum chromodynamics theory. So this QCD, quantum chromodynamics theory, which describes strong interactions 
the way quarks and gluons bond to form matter particles such as protons and neutrons have been extended to black matter particles too and this is how axions have been postulated assumed to exist so this what is quantum chromodynamics what is strong interactions what are quarks and gluons and how protons and neutrons are formed out of it we'll see below in these images so this you can see this is the elements of the standard model so standard model of physics so this talks of matter particles gauge particles which bind the matter particles together to form other particles and these are scalar particles so we have done this earlier too in snt2 so again you should know that matter particles are basically quark and leptons and the different types of quarks different types of leptons then there is strong force gluon electromagnetic force photon and weak forces like w bosons and z bosons so these are gauge particles types of gauge particles which bind the matter particles together also in 29th october 2016 news section we have already discussed it was in news in hindu that mon trackers mon is this lepton type of lepton particle these mon trackers have been established telescope arrays have been established in uti in india so these will try to detect the mons from the cosmic ray showers so solar flares which come on the surface of the earth so so it will be used to detect mon particles from them so these are matter particles these are not black matter particles so these are actual matter particles and these can be detected these exist we know them so these about the standard model of physics too again there are other scalar particles too like higgs particles have also been discovered so there may be many more which may be discovered too so this is an example of how quark so this is a type of matter particle so up quark down down quark and another up quark these three are bound together by gluons so gluons is the binding particle and these together this is the setup of a proton so these together form a proton so we know about atom and subatomic particles protons neutrons and electrons at least so there are many subatomic particles too and there are constituents of these subatomic particles too those are these quarks gluons so this is the structure of a proton now then this is about all types of particles so all particles fundamental particles and non fundamental particles so these are quarks so you can see here leptons and quarks so quarks are these non fundamental particles leptons are there then exchange particles are there these are gluons photons wz bosons also known as gauge particles or binding particles as we just saw so electrons are leptons then protons and neutrons are made of quarks as we just saw proton along with the quarks along with gauge particles the gluon form the proton so similarly neutrons are also formed along with quarks three quarks combined with a different combination of quarks along with gluons forms neutrons so these are the different types of particles as we know currently then this is regarding the four fundamental forces under the standard model of physics these forces are gravity weak force strong force and electromagnetism so gravity exists between all particles with mass then weak force is experienced by quarks and leptons these are the two matter particles which we discussed electromagnetism is experienced in electrically charged particles the force carrier particle is photons and the strong force is between quarks and gluons so as we saw quarks are bound together by gluons to form a proton or a neutron so these gluons are the strong force carrying particles so the force relative strength of this force is less least for gravity and strongest for strong force so this is the four fundamental forces also which we understand then the next is about quantum chromodynamics which it said was used to postulate about axions of a type of particle of dark matter so this quantum chromodynamics theory was put forth in 1970s so this is a theory of strong interactions is talks of these quarks and gluon particles so th this as we saw this is the structure of a proton too so these are different types of quark particles three quark particles bound together by gluons forms a proton so just an example of a particle so these quark particles are said to be of different types so that is different colors as postulated here so that's why it's called chromo chromo stands for color so this quantum chromodynamics talks of these strong interactions about how gluons bind together these quark particles to form a particle 
So this is about the quantum chromodynamics theory which has been extended to dark matter particles too. So that is how axions as a type of dark matter particle exist has been postulated. Okay. Then the next news item is flu infection depends on the year you were born, say study. So this study is based on the idea that the flu virus which you encounter as a child which you have been infected with then your body develops resistance to that type of flu virus strain and all similar strains. So if later you encounter another type of flu virus strain which is significantly different from that one so then you don't have enough resistance to it and you become vulnerable to that type of flu. So influenza or flu is of three types A, B and C. So influenza A is the one which generally affects infects birds, animals and also humans. So influenza A virus is the cause for all the seasonal influenza which we see epidemics as well as pandemics. So epidemics when it spreads to a, in a huge population and pandemics is when it is on a much larger scale across continents. So that is pandemics. So type B and C influenza viruses infects humans only and it is not the cause for pandemics. So there animals, birds and animals do not function as hosts and carriers of these viruses and spreading these viruses. So those are not of significant danger. So influenza A virus also is of two types. It is type 1 and type 2 influenza. So these bird flus which we hear of are influenza A type of viruses. H5N1 bird flu is type 1 branch and H7N9 bird flu is type 2. So type 2 virus. So now H5N1 this study has made a study of all these type of viruses too and they have found that H5N1 causes significant mortality in younger population. So And they are immune to H7N9. On the other hand H7N9 causes much more devastation in the elderly population. So this is a study which has been done based on this idea. So this helps, the, the benefit of this study is that it will help in understanding whenever an epidemic or a pandemic develops, then vaccines will be in scarcity. So these vaccines should be used for the most vulnerable population. So then if you have an idea about which section of the population is vulnerable, they can be given these vaccines and mortality rates can be reduced in these epidemics and pandemics. So that's the significance of this study. So here you can, you can see avian influenza of type A, H5N1 and H7N9. So this is a virus subtype. So this has been the H5N1 outbreak took place first in 1997 in China. Then even again in 2003 and 4 it emerged in Asia. This was known as the bird flu. And presently we are seeing in China H7N9 is affecting significant people in China also and it may spread. So this is all because of birds, poultry. So poultry infections and through it, it spreads to humans. Then the next news item is India still losing fight against child pneumonia, diarrhea epidemics. So India has largest number of deaths due to pneumonia and diarrhea in the children in the age group 0 to 5 years. So India has topped this list in 2015 to and again in 2016, it has the highest burden of deaths. So this has been highlighted and it has made a minor reduction in the number of deaths but still the situation is alarming. So there are vaccines present. So for pneumonia too there is this vaccine pneumococcal conjugate vaccine PCV which has been introduced in 2000. But the report says that even 15 years after its introduction countries with significant pneumonia burden like India, China, Indonesia have not made part this vaccine part of their routine immunization program. So that is important. The Indian health minister presently has made an announcement says starting from 2017 this PCV vaccine will be introduced in five states with a high incidence of pneumonia deaths that is Bimaru, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh and also Himachal Pradesh. Then another vaccine, rotavirus vaccine, which is used for uh, against diarrhea. So rotavirus is the most common cause of diarrheal diseases in infants and young children. So this rotavirus vaccine has also been introduced in India in 2015. So that is of significance. So vaccination is one way to prevent this disease. The other methods are even nutrition, exclusive breastfeeding in the initial years, initial months. Then access to care, which should be there in place, use of antibiotics and also ORS, oral rehydration solution in cases of diarrhea. So this helps in minimizing the incidence of these diseases and overcoming them. So this is there. Then 
this is the number of deaths as you can see too which take place and how india is affected because of this this is about mission vaccination that is mission indra dhanush which has been announced last year so this covers seven diseases indra dhanush the rainbow comprising of seven colors so seven diseases for which vaccine will be provided under the government's immunization program so these seven diseases are diphtheria whooping cough tetanus polio tuberculosis measles and hepatitis b so this does not include pneumonia and diarrhea as such so just as part of this this has also been included so that you know about them again here 201 districts have been selected for where this this will be introduced first so these are the districts where at least 50% of the population children have been unvaccinated or partially vaccinated so out of these two 82 districts of the 201 are in bimaru bihar madhya pradesh rajasthan and uttar pradesh then the next news item is kane betwa project hangs on forest not yesterday we discussed about satlej yamuna link canal project which was in the states of punjab and haryana now this is regarding the kane betwa river interlinking project this is a 9000 crore proposed project in the pipeline for long now so you can see this is regarding linking kane and betwa rivers so this up here is the betwa river which flows through uttar pradesh and down here this is the kane river again flowing through uttar pradesh coming down to madhya pradesh this is the panna national park which is located in the region of kane river kane river flows through panna national park so this proposed river linking will affect this panna national park where there is a significant tiger population so this will result in submergence or even the core forest areas in this region so for this river linking project to go ahead it requires not just environmental clearance but a specific forest clearance too from here so that's why this is awaiting clearances and the forest department presently the nod has been deferred till after january 2017 so environment ministry has presently announces that this will be delayed so we'll have to wait and watch what happens in this aspect too but it is a project which will benefit the regions the bundelkhand district here and also the madhya pradesh districts would benefit by getting drinking water supplies assurances it will benefit in terms of irrigation water for industries plus also hydroelectricity generated power generation will benefit these regions so let's see this is a part of the government's plan to interlink rivers so that regions which are having deficiency in water supply can also be benefited so that's the idea the water resource minister uma bharti has also said that if this environmental clearance is not given for this project then she'll go on a hunger strike so we'll have to wait and watch what happens here then the next news item is we are not for building walls this is a canadian minister immigration minister who has made a statement in the context of even donald trump being elected as the president of usa and he has made a statement of about policy of building walls walls means stalling immigrations so he says we welcome immigrants we want students to come in and work in high tech industry in in, in canada also so they are going to expand the immigration program rather than stalling immigration we are going to expand it he says we have a policy of multiculturalism so people are welcome to stay in assimilate into the population in canada so people are welcome we have open gates it says canada supports globalization and the last news item is india and ukraine to close gap in ties so this is regarding india ukraine bilateral relations the last bilateral exchange took place in 2012 when ukraine president viktor yanukovych visited india now in 2016 ukrainian foreign minister has plans to visit india so that was that will be revival of bilateral relations the problem here was because of internal unrest in ukraine in 2014 we had evacuated indian citizens from ukraine to so the problem is in the eastern province of ukraine where unrest has prevailed because of russian secessionist movements also supported by russia these are russian speaking regions in ukraine we we'll look at the map too so this is ukraine here in europe russia is its neighbor it's a former soviet union country this part which you see is non russian speaking and the lower part of ukraine and the eastern part here is russian speaking province regions and these red regions pink regions are where russian separatist claims are dominant so they claim separation from ukraine and are supported by russia this crimea region the crimean war you must have heard of so this has been controlled taken over by russia and is controlled by russia 
so these are considered to be part of russia only these are russian speaking people they have been given russian passport also and russia says we are protecting people our people from ukraine so ukrainian government is committing atrocities against them and russia protects them so this is a secessionist tendency being seen here and this all gets complicated because western powers support ukraine against russia so it becomes like a superpower struggle over ukraine so this is the issue so another problem with ukraine is that ukraine supports pakistan so it has defense relations with pakistan so that complicates its relation with india but it is of significance as also it is a member of nsg2 now and also it is a non permanent member presently in the un security council for a two year term so that is why revival of relations has been initiated now so many military modernization plans are also on the anvil so we'll see when the visits happens what Uh, for the development take place this is regarding former soviet union countries too so these are 15 soviet union countries who got disintegrated in 1990s so this is russia the major constituent and then the other ones you can see these are the baltic states estonia latvia lithuania presently part of europe these are european continent countries then the bread basket ukraine lies here as you can see moldova small country here belarus ukraine and moldova then these are called the caucasus that is georgia armenia and azerbaijan then this is the caspian sea which is actually the largest lake in the world it is surrounded by uh, land so it has no ocean outlet as such so it is called caspian sea but it is a lake then this is the aral sea small here the central asian countries kazakhstan the largest then kyrgyzstan uzbekistan tajikistan turkmenistan so these are former soviet union countries So that is it for today thank you so much